What's going on? It's Jackander from Nothing But Tech. I hope you guys are all having a great day slash night whenever you're watching this. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be checking out the 12-inch MacBook by Apple. Let's get into it. So over the past six months, I've been using the MacBook. Wait, are you talking about the 12-inch MacBook from Apple? The one that has two ports and starts at $12.99? Uh, yeah, but but that's not all it is. It, the MacBook is more than just the price and the port situation. Oh, really? Really? It's not even that it's that expensive, it's just that, for the price, the specs are pretty terrible. I mean, like, it has a Core M3 1.1 GHz processor, 256 GB of storage, and a mere 8 GB of RAM. <laughs> I mean, come on, enough said. Come on now, you know Apple has been known to put in really low-powered specs and still have their devices perform really well. And when you buy Apple, you're not just buying for the actual product, you're buying for the ecosystem also. So, hear me out on this one. If you have the cash for it and you're the type of person I'm going to be talking about in this video, you might just love the MacBook. So hear me out. All right, all right I'll, I'll give it a chance, but it has a lot to live up to because I'm currently rocking the Lenovo Yoga 900, and for $300 less, it has very similar specs and even a better processor. It has a Core i7. That just puts the M3 to shame. Okay, this is my six month later MacBook 12 inch review. Uh, I've been using it for six months for almost every single day um, of those six months. So all I'm gonna ask from you guys is to come in with no preconceived notions. Just hear me out in this video and at the end of it, you can make your own conclusion and let me know in the comments down below. But just hear me out with an open mind. The 12 inch MacBook is often compared to devices like the Razer Blade or the XPS 13 and that's really not a fair comparison. The MacBook aims to do something completely different than those two devices. The MacBook is for someone that really um, values a small portable form factor um, that's really just going to be doing light tasks like web browsing, note taking, media consumption, stuff like that. Nothing like video editing, although you could do an occasional edit on it, but the MacBook is not really for someone that really values performance. It's for someone that values the form factor and then performance second. The build on this machine is top of the line. No other computer compares to this from any other manufacturer. It looks great and feels extremely premium and durable. The all metal hinge is a nice touch aesthetically and functionally also. There's no longer a glowing Apple logo on the back, but I honestly like the reflective one a bit more. In terms of the actual form factor, this computer is tiny and extremely light. It's just a hair over two pounds and 0.52 inches at its thickest point with 0.14 inches thick at its thinnest point. Insane. This makes for an extremely portable computer, which is easy to just take in your bag and go to travel, go to class, or go to work. In terms of battery life, you can expect about a full day's worth on pretty light use, but pull up and start using Final Cut Pro, and you can kill this thing in about 90 minutes. Overall though, for the size of this computer and all the pixels it is pushing, I would have to say that the battery life is pretty impressive. In terms of those pixels it is pushing, it is a 2304 by 1440 panel, and you guys already know this, but Apple does displays really well. The screen is bright, colors pop, and text and information is sharp. Really a stunning panel. Wait, stop for a sec. It seems like you're forgetting some really important stuff, like the keyboard, the trackpad, the port situation, and the performance. I mean, not like that actually has anything to do with the computer, right? Like, let's just not mention that. Yeah, you're right. Well, in terms of the trackpad, that's an easy one. It's great. Uh, it doesn't have the jittery kind of effect that most Windows laptops have where like you scroll and it kind of just feels rough to scroll. You see this a lot in the Surface Book or um, you scroll and it's delayed. The tr Apple just does trackpads really well. It's just a smooth experience and the actual Surface just feels really good to like run your fingers around. So the trackpad is a solid A+. And yeah, the keyboard, that's a little bit more of a difficult one. I actually really liked it, but it did take a fair amount of adjustment time before I got used to typing on it quickly with no mistakes. The key travel is really non-existent, but the clickiness and responsive tap is definitely still there. Now, it's definitely no mechanical keyboard like I'm used to on my desktop workspace, but it is a pretty good keyboard and I was able to type on it pretty quickly and accurately as well. But going back over to performance, it's kind of a mixed bag here. It is definitely not a powerhouse by any means, and if you need sure performance, you should take a look at the 15-inch MacBook Pro, but this computer is just not for that. It is for the student or the businessman that needs to take notes, reply to emails, and consume media. So for that list, it's definitely pretty expensive and it's hard to justify as a student or a businessman to purchase this but and you can definitely find cheaper windows options but if you really like the mac ecosystem and the mac operating system which i personally do then that's just the price you have to pay just like all apple products it's a lot of money but it definitely turns out to be worth it all right what about the port situation though 
I'm getting into it, give me a second. The port situation is kind of another tricky one. You'll find one USB Type-C connector, which acts as your charge port and your data port, alongside a headphone jack on the other side. Apple is always looking to the future and cutting ports, and I honestly respect that they are moving companies to USB Type-C accessories, because Apple is really one of the only manufacturers that has the power to do that. But what I'm not happy with though, is the fact that there's only one USB Type-C port. This means without an adapter, you can't charge and plug in a hard drive or another accessory. If you're still on that USB type A train, like a lot of us are, Apple charges ludicrous prices for adapters, so I'll leave some of my favorite options down below because I can never justify spending that much money on an Apple adapter when there's a reasonable alternative for a pretty well-known brand. So that's the MacBook, I would definitely say- Yeah, no, still not buying that. Okay, yeah, I, un I understand why you wouldn't, but listen to me, if you're one of these people watching this video and you're like the clone over there, then you, yeah, you shouldn't buy it. You'll be pretty happy with something else. But if you're like myself and you just need a machine like this for note taking, um, doing some emails, watching like watching Netflix or YouTube, it will definitely handle it. And if you need to throw in the occasional 1080p edit on Final Cut, you'll be fine. But open up After Effects or Adobe Premiere and this computer is gonna lag like it's nobody's business. So this computer is definitely overpriced, I'll give you that. But it's an awesome computer and uh, even after I said all these bad things about it, I still find myself using it on the daily, so. It's really your decision now. That's the information. Thank you guys for coming into it with an open mind, or at least I hope you did. Let me know what you think of the MacBook down below. I would love to have a conversation. Uh, and thank you guys all so much for watching this video. I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Bye.